Hello everyone. I am Polymy from Edureka and I welcome you all to our new session on Power BI interview questions. So today in this session we are going to be discussing about all the frequently asked Power BI interview questions. So be rest assured because this video is all you need before your Power BI interview. We have this following agenda for today. First is Power BI desktop where we are going to be covering all the frequently asked questions under this like custom charts, charts and how we are creating charts etc. In the next section we have Power Query Editor where we will be talking about how we are transforming data and some functions related to it. For the third section we have DEX where we are going to be covering all the DEX function here and data functionalities. And the last section we have Power BI Service where we will be talking about all the features and functionalities of it along with some examples. So before we get started, if you like our video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss any update from Edureka channel. Also, if you're looking for any certification course, do check out the link given in the description below. So let's get started. Our first section is Power BI Desktop. In this section, our first question is, explain the charts you have used so far and why. So in this question, the interviewer not only wants to know your knowledge on charts, but also why you are using those charts. So you can say as, I had a scenario for comparing year on year on my project, so I used waterfall chart. The key feature of a waterfall chart is that it shows changes, not only over time, but in relation to the previous period. To see marketing strategies, I used funnel charts. As a funnel charts helps you to visualize a linear process that has sequential connected stages. For example, a sales funnel that tracks customers through stages. Our next question is, explain the difference between filters and slices. Filter is something which is within the tool, so only developers know which filter is applied. Whereas in the case of slicers, it's a user-friendly interaction. It can be displayed on the screen. Filters are not user understandable, but slices are. They can select and it gets affected. Filters and slicers have almost different use cases, but have same functionalities. Filters are quite advanced where slicers has limited options. Our next question is, what is bookmark in Power BI? So with bookmark, you can mark certain visual and use it for enhancing report. Just imagine creating a state with your favorite visuals, colors, filters, and getting into that stage by a single click every time you want. We can do this by saving our report and using it over and over again. But bookmark is such an easy feature which is just a single click game. Our next question is how to make reports dynamic. We can make reports dynamic by these three factors, bookmark, visuals, buttons and actions. So here bookmark, as we discussed, is an added advantage. Our next question is how to publish your report on Power BI. So for this question, we have five steps. First, we select publish from the home tab and then we save and select the destination that is the workspace. And after that, we log into our Power BI online service and then we open the workspace where we saved it in. And finally, we open the published report. The last question for this section is, how can you make a custom chart? So for this question, we can say there are 250 plus custom charts, drill down charts, infographic charts. For comparing between two categories, we have tornado chart. Sang chart is used to compare categorical with categorical. Our next section is Power Query Editor. For this section, our very first question is, what are fact tables and dimension tables? In every model, there is always two type of tables. One with a complete business data, that is the fact table, and one with all lookup table, that is the dimension table. Our next question is, what is import mode and direct mode? Whenever we bring data to Power BI, we have two ways, import or direct query mode. Power BI will have some cache space to store data. So when we store data in Power BI, it's called import mode. It's completely in your control. But the disadvantage is that data can be very huge. 
that we have an alternative for that and it's called direct query mode which access source table via a query it access data by giving reference so in direct query mode it's only helpful to reference the data it tries to access data using select table name from student etc so only the reference will be called our next question for power query editor is what is the difference between star schema and snowflake schema star schema performs better and the joins are also quite simpler whereas in snowflake schema join is quite complex and optimization takes a lot of time so the features based on which we compared star schema and snowflake schema are model space query execution simplicity design foreign keys data redundancy normalization so for model star schema is a top down model and snowflake schema is a bottom up model for space star schema uses more space snowflake schema uses less space and so on and for normalization part star schema there is no normalization used but for snowflake schema normalization is used also be normalization our next question under this section is explain merge and append in power query editor so when you have one or more columns that you'd like to add to another query you merge the queries but when you have additional rows of data that you would like to add to an existing query you append the query moving into our next section that is dex so under this section our very first question is what dex functions have you come across with so for this question we can approach it as there are 250 available dex function we have filter function time intelligence function date function logical function mathematical function you can pick 2 to 3 and talk about it with an example so for filter function we have calculate table all except all selected for time intelligence function we are mostly dealing with factors like previous month sales previous year sales last year sales for this aspect time intelligence function is very important it's important that we create date table for each time intelligence function our next question is what is the difference between sum and sumx both does almost the same operation but sum is an aggregated calculated column for example we have total sales on the sales column you want to find the total sales value you can just write sum of sales the condition for applying this is that the actual column has to exist so sum becomes a generic function whereas in sumx function even though we don't have the existing column still you can apply the calculation row by row by giving just an expression for example suppose we want to find total sum if we have column of sales we can use sum but if we don't then we can use sumx so it will be an expression by just using any two columns so sumx is row level context whereas sum is an aggregate value our next question is why do we need a date table for most of the time intelligence function your calculations has to be taken with respect to today's date we calculate last month last quarter last year so we are telling to the system this is what the correct date is and based on today's date please calculate last year total sales that's the purpose of a date table our next question is what is all except function this is a filter function so whenever we want to calculate the grand total this function will be important whenever we take a filter and if we drag it to any visual the filter context will change but if we don't want to change the context of the filter we are using all function but when we want to change only certain parts of the function as in a set of column or two we are using all except function our next question is what is the difference between measures and calculated column measure is a generic function which will not stay on the data set is just a calculation so if you drag out any of the visual the generic function will be applied to those visual so that's the purpose of measure whereas calculated column is adding new column to data set and that new column is getting added to the data set which is taking up space so as we can see measures does not take space in data set 
but calculated column take up space in data set. Measures are faster, whereas calculated column are slow comparatively. Our next section is Power BI service. So under this section, our very first question is, what is the difference between workspace and my workspace? So workspace and my workspace can be compared based on rough copies. So suppose you used to have rough copies in your school days where you used to do rough work, but you never used to share it with your class teachers or classmates. But your class book used to be shared with your class teachers or classmates. So this way we can compare it as workspace being the class book which we are sharing to other people but my workspace being the rough copy which we are only sharing with ourselves and it's personal. So workspace is used for collaborating on content whereas my workspace are just a container for dashboard reports. Workspace is not a personal workspace and my workspace is a personal workspace and workspace are suited to development and collaboration with co-workers but my workspace is a private area. Our next question is what is the difference between report and dashboard? So dashboards are one page whereas reports are multiple page or can be one page as well. Dashboards are using single or multiple data set but reports are using only single data set. Dashboards can be filtered whereas report can be and dashboards are not available in Power BI desktop. It's only available in the online Power BI service, whereas reports are available in Power BI desktop. Our next question is, what is data flow in Power BI service? Power Query Editor in Power BI service is what we know as data flow in Power BI service. So by using data flow in Power BI service, we can create our data sets. We can reuse the data set, which already been used by different workspace. We can transform the data, Whatever transformation we were doing in Power Query Editor, we can do it in Power BI service as well using data flow. So data transformation can be done on Power BI service using data flow as to conclude. So as you can see from the diagram, we have different data sources which is getting combined to a common data model and then we are creating data set from it and making reports from those data sets and then finally creating a dashboard from the reports. Our next question is what is a Power BI gateway and what are its types? Gateway is responsible for moving your data from on-premise to your services or from connecting your desktop. You should be having an initial step that is gateway. It's a connectivity mode in your data set as well as the service. So there are two ways. First is standard, which is the preferred one where most of your colleagues, whoever is working for the report will be having access to it and can manage it as well. And the next one is the normal one, which is the personal gateway. So only one person can use it. Our next question is what roles are available in workspace? We have admin, contributor, member and viewer, where admin is person who can access anything, add people and admin has the highest access. And viewer has the lowest access, who can't see the data set. Contributor is responsible for contributing to the report. He'll be able to add features to the report. Member has equal role but is one position higher than contributor. He will be able to add other people but not the admin. That's all for this video. I hope you understood what we have covered in this video. If you have any query regarding today's session, you can comment down below and we will reach out to you at the earliest. Thank you and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!